and action. Are we okay. On? You're on a you're on a beach. <laughs> All your clothes are gone. So just stuck in your craw, we start every one of them the exact same way. No, no, it doesn't. Because again, I think consistency is great. It's people, you know, embedded in it gets embedded it got embedded in my brain. Yeah. Uh, so I think it does a trick. Welcome to the Mead Metal and MMA podcast. I'm Kevin. That's Brandon. In an episode fifteen. Look, we made it. All right. It's got to be some kind of anniversary, right? Over double digits a while back. That's right. So that means we've been doing this shit for like 15 solid weeks. Yeah. Not you, bad. Want, you want to listen to one a week? You're covered for nearly the next four months. So as it turns out, we uh, had some opinions last week. I wouldn't say we had opinions. I would say we just had people disagree with us <laughs> in YouTube's fashion of disagreement, which is by... Uh, Got a lot of thumbs down on that last episode. Got some thumbs up, too. Got more thumbs up and thumbs down, yeah. I think it's just because it's a divisive subject. Yeah, and, and I think just as soon as they hear my tone or our tone on the whole Winter Sun thing, first 30 seconds, thumbs down, not listening no more, fuck off. Oh, no, yeah, absolutely. I'm positive of that. You know, why listen to another opinion and, you know, try to formulate a debate? Why do that? There's no fun in that. Well, let's go ahead and uh, hit things in order as we usually do. The mead portion of the uh, podcast, we have um, RuneStone underway, which you were able to uh, have a, a little bit of a quantity of last weekend during the fights. What do you think? Uh, I dig. Uh, I, I think uh, I think we nailed the quantity of orange peel and uh, vanilla extract for what we want to do. I'm really excited. I'm I, I'm still wavering back and forth on whether or not to use actual vanilla beans in it or to utilize the vanilla extract. Yeah. I, I mean, the extract is a lot cleaner. We're going to get a lot more trash in the uh, batch uh, if we use actual vanilla bean. But yeah, but uh, we're going to have trash anyway. Yeah. The, uh, the the actually, as it turns out, you get a lot off of uh, orange peel. So I've got to figure out a. Uh, Probably a double a, a double hops bag, maybe to try to keep right. some of that down at bay. I don't know, but uh, but nonetheless, though we'll see. Uh, we have to. Th- those are all going to be added in secondary. So we've already got the initial batch underway. And the one thing is, is when it comes back to it, if if you yeah, didn't listen to the very first podcast or whatever, and I'd be kind of crazy to you know, or an egomaniac to think everybody just goes back and hangs on every <laughs> word. But what mead is at its core is just honey, water, and yeast. It's just three ingredients. Time, the most important of all. Well, yeah, but I mean, but as far as throwing things into a fermenter, that's the only right. three things that you need. Well, so you have the option sometimes it will dull down a lot of the flavor, but if you want the essence throughout the batch, you put things into a primary fermentation. Otherwise, it clears primary in about 30 to 45 days, it goes off to secondary fermentation. That's usually when we add in flavorings. Right. And that's kind of what we're going to do with this batch. I'd thought about maybe trying it in primary, but we didn't experiment that way. So the experimental batch came off the way we wanted yeah, it. Yeah, after the fermentation is done, that's the that's the time to add all that. Didn't really see a lot of reason to do any tweaks, so let's keep it the same. So we got the same honey, we got the same yeast, and we're using the same water. Because if you change up any of those three variables, you're going to get a very different batch of meat. Absolutely. So if I've learned anything in the... God, how long have we been doing this for? Over two. Well, we're on our second anniversary this month. So yeah, we're heading like yeah. we're actually probably just past our second anniversary. Very true. Happy anniversary. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I I think the one thing we've learned is, and, and if one thing changes, you're not going to get what you think you're going to get. Right. As we found out, really the the long ships batch has always been really my favorite because it's got the uh, French oak in it. And right. it's like a medium toast on it. And then uh, little peppercorns and a tiny bit of uh, clove. Well, as we, as we found out, when we utilized that alfalfa honey, it, it came off being a really sweet Sweet batch. factor went through the roof, yeah. You know, and, and a lot of people thought, man, I really like your first batch. It had a really, like, a, like kind of a hard liquor kind of a thing to it. Yeah, it did. But by utilizing a different honey altogether, then it changed up the entire flavor profile. <coughs> so... Um, so yeah, all right. It, it is what it is. Yeah. Like, so our experimental batch came out the way we wanted to. We used some honey out of uh, the panhandle uh, around Tulia, Texas, and there we go. We use the same one again. So everything is the same. The uh, large-scale batch should be the same as the experimental batch. Yep. Hey, if it comes out five gallons of what we got in that fridge, it's going to be a happy day. 
Yeah, the profile is really good because you get that citrus off the orange. You can tell the orange is there. The vanilla is really yeah. Uh, the orange works really well with it. I was kind of shocked. The vanilla is kind of a sneaky little bastard. It's there, and you don't really know it's there until like until like kind of you get this clean aftertaste, and the vanilla kind of lingers a bit. So. Right. All right, that's probably it for the mead this week. I mean, we probably talked way longer yeah, than I thought the, we were. Our mead year starts off pretty slow. Get get back to us around summertime. Right. Oh man, there, there's going to be a lot of activity going on. Yeah, we still got um, a lot for our uh, our band donators. We've got an entire case of uh, batch one, uh, which, which is, uh, Ruben Gonzalez walked out of here last weekend with four bottles of batch one. Good God! All right, take that back. Three bottles of batch one and uh, our last bottle of Sacred Tree. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so, so thank you, Sacred, Ruben. Sacred Tree is done, so <clears throat> moving on. Pro- I don't know. Do you think we're going to do an apple batch again? I think we do. We need to just go straight up apple. There's like wedges of apple. <sighs> maybe. And al- and maybe I, the alfalfa. I don't know. I'd rather do a piment batch yeah. before we do an apple batch. And that, what piment is, it's a style of mead where um, it's, it's grapes. So a lot of people say, well, well, then what's the difference between that and wine? Well, you already have your mead, and then you add the, uh, the grapes in and the primary. And that way, then your yeast has uh, some different things to uh, focus on and, and consume uh, to create the alcohol. And it'll, uh, it's, it's a far more pervasive flavor, but it's not wine. It's still a mead. Right. All right. Shall we get to the metal segment? <laughs> uh, what do you want to talk about? You want, you want uh, the good shit or the bad shit? Let's go good shit first of all. Um, Mastodon, their third song off of their new record. I, I, I'm starting to wonder how many tracks are on it because I'm starting to get a feeling we've already heard a quarter of the album at least. Eh, well, the, these songs are average in three to four minutes. So well, that's true. It could be like a 12 song album. They're not like seven or eight and minutes I'm sure, long. Now. I'm sure that Mastodon probably has already put out a track list. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to guess 12, 12 songs. So we're looking forward to uh, that release coming up on what, the 30th, 31st. 31st. There. And then, yeah, um, again, that that song, Show Yourself, is uh, out of all three songs that are right now, in my opinion, the weakest, but not saying it's not good. Just out of the three, Sultan's Curse and Andromeda get me ready to buy this album. Sultan's Curse, it, the problem is, is because you compare it up to that one, that was the first one that they'd released. And frankly, I mean, if that I understand if that was the best track on the record, I understand. That's usually what bands do, just like Metallica. Their first single was that one of the heaviest songs on the album, right? And the first song on the album. Yeah, well, and so I, I believe Sultan's Curse is the first on that one as well. That I think that'd be a great opener. That'd but, be a great opener. Yeah. You know, so we've got three of theirs. We have two of the Paul Bear. Paul Bear is coming out on what the twenty fourth. The twenty fourth. Yes. So. Yeah, those are the two we're really looking forward to. And on top of that, the, I mean, those of you that are fans of Elder, they have got one coming out later this year. Um, there's another band that I'm not terribly familiar with. This one's coming out that is basically falls under the influences of Elder, which is kind of a eh, kind of a little doomy, but a little prog as well. Who's that? Well, I can find it for you. I, I shouldn't have brought it up unless I'm willing to back it up with one. Yeah, I was like, wait, the, um, the fuck are you talking about? Eh, half the time I don't know, but um, and they do have a new one coming out because uh, I was on a group and God, I don't even remember the doom metal group now um, that was excited about this. Eh, let's just go ahead and uh, let me just pop up here on the Google. <laughs> You're talking about the new Elder album. Yeah, but there's another one that's coming out this year as well. There, somebody pointed out there are four primo doom metal bands that are coming out this year. All right, well, uh, and I'm not finding it. I should have probably bookmarked it, but then again, I do a lot of my prep for the show on my computer, and then you know, I'm sitting around with a phone. So the times, my friend, they've changed. Yeah, yeah, they they put out a whole listing of. Uh, various ones, and a lot of these I've never heard of. Behemoth's got one coming out, but I'm not a fan. It's just a uh, band I do recognize. Good old black metal. Yeah, well, that's the other thing. I'm, black metal, I'm not huge on. By the way, uh, Corrosion of Conformity's got one coming out this year. Oh, wow. Pepper uh, Keenan still doing work. Cradle of Filth, which uh, you're more of a fan of them than I am. Of one song they do. Fear Factory. Late oh, summer? about goddamn time. Late summer. Uh, Ghost. Oh, Ghost. Yeah, that was the one I was trying to think of. We um, pl- I played Ghost for you. You yeah. were not a fan. 
and uh, High on Fire. They've got. Oh, them. High on Fire. Now, High on Fire, that's a uh, uh, former front man of sleep, I think, was doing that. Uh, maybe. Uh, Mike, Matt Pike, he's the uh, guitarist. Yeah, that haggard, haggard looking dude, man. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, yeah. Uh, Hot and Fire actually is like some pretty aggressive sludgy doom metal. I believe uh, Sleep has got one coming out this year. See, there's Mastodon. We were aware of that. And uh, I'm not a big fan of Morbid Angel. Not a big fan of Origin. Shit, never heard of them. Paul Bear, we're happy about that. God, they yeah, they're all right. right they're uh, yeah, Sleep. That's that's actually, that, I mean, they're stoner metal more than anything else, but uh, but they've got this one coming out. Yeah, Dope Smoker is an amazing album. And uh, System of Down. New, no way. Really? New album from System of Down this year? Possibly due in 2017. Oh, uh, fuck that. Then it's no. Okay. No, no we're not. <laughs> that might very well be a lot like a, a certain band that we... Uh, Last time they put out a new album, I was living in Clovis. So that'd be 11 years ago. Yeah, first time in over 10 years. <laughs> Shit. And they say they're not trying to make Toxicity Part 2. That's a shame. Uh, that first album see. of uh, System Down is actually quite good. And my youth enjoyed it. And uh, that's, that's it. Those are the only bands I recognize. Now, this is off of a list um, of 40 different ones. Uh, and it's off of Metal and Jackson. You can check that off yeah, yourself on the on upcoming releases for 2017. But, yeah, they're, uh, they peg about 40 of them. I only know of about a little over a quarter of them. Was uh, Winter Sun's Four Seasons on there? No, that one was not on there, which How is weird. weird to me. Because you would think that as a metal band uh, that regularly puts out records. That if they have a big release coming up that people are excited for, it'd be on a list. Well, it's almost like when your favorite band comes to town, you get really excited about it. And go, whoo, it's my favorite band. I'm going to be able to see them. And then you find out, oh, no, they're playing a private party. Oh, they're playing the Chuck E. Cheese for some rotten kid. <laughs> Damn. That's, is that the wrong analogy I'm using for Winter Sun in this deal? That they're going to just start playing pizza parties for Finnish children? <laughs> well, no, not necessarily that. I, I'd have far more respect for them if they were getting paid to do that to build this fucking studio than what they're doing now. Because what they're doing is... it. it, it I hope, I hope like hell, it's not the coming of what musicians are doing in the future of just trying to find crowdfunding now for for young up-and-coming artists that hey they've got a big crowd of friends or whatever and they're playing their ass off people know who they are and they decide to crowdfund an album great yeah like if you and i were to crowdfund an album it would make sense because we're not backed by a label guess, guess who is backed by a fucking label and <laughs> fucking winter's on is backed by a label yeah. a big label yeah. a good label which uh wouldn't you have to assume nuclear blast is going to probably drop them like a bad habit once the uh three record requisite i think is out of the way if they hit their seven hundred and fifty thou, they'd be fools to do it because they obviously have a hardcore fan base that's going to make them moderately rich well, they got a fan base where uh you know, easily where uh they might have a little over five thousand people buying the same album three times which yeah they've uh they've hit their first goal two hundred and fifty six thou congratulations I mean, you know, they did it. Round one, it's complete. Well, if they're going back and, like, throwing another 50 euro each li each fan at a whack, doesn't the old saying, a fool and his money are easily parted? <laughs> no, see, now you're getting all philosophical on me. No, nah, no, not really. <laughs> not not much, not much. <laughs> no, it's, um, the thing is, what else is there to offer? What else does Winter Sun have in the back catalog? I don't. Well, they're going to find it out. They're going to, and you're going to find out very quickly because they're going to launch their other crowdfunding leg two, to where they're trying to get to five hundred thousand euros, and we expect that'll be out probably in the next month. Uh, if they launch, because if it's coming out in July, physical copy, you got March, April, and May. Now the physical copy comes from Nuclear Blast, which, by the way, if I were to buy the said album, which I'm probably not. Um, that's the way I would do it because physical copy of something in hand is better than not having anything. Yeah, I realize all the heavy metal youth think CDs and stuff are a dying thing. Meanwhile, these are the same kids that are fucking bitching about having to download video games and not getting a physical copy. Sure. You know, it's okay for music, but not for video games. Oh, go to have my fucking actual copy of the game or else it just doesn't feel right. Right, but yeah, but they're okay with it with when, it come, when it comes to music. And like I said, it's the youth. It's, it's these young people. It's and the young kids. And what happens at some point, I mean, are we probably going to go on the assumption that MP3 will be the 
end all be all format for the next oh, 20 years. Oh, fuck that, man. 4K is going to be the format if you're listening to Yari because <laughs> everything's in 4K. Whatever. I mean, <laughs> I got to listen to his little squirrely ass one more time to talk about how this has got to kick so much ass. <laughs> he, he just, it's like he's perpetually Bob Dole fist in everything. He really is. Yeah. I mean, it's, I'd, like I said, I'm glad, hey, they, they hit that first one. We're getting new Winter Sun music this year. That should be a joyous thing. It really should. Should be able to take a little joy in that. I can't. Because in April, we're going to see what round two brings, and I think they're going to be extremely disappointed. Would you think in April, then, that's where they finally crank out time two? Or are they going to hold that all the way to oh, no, no, 750000 no. Oh, no, no. They're, time two ain't coming out till that studio is built. Ah. I mean, that's and that's going to take, after say they hit seven hundred fifty grand. How long is it going to take to build their property, get the studio built, and then really start hammering down time two? You're talking 2018, maybe beginning of 2019. Well, okay, so time one came out, what, 2012? 2012. So 2020 would be about right then. That's every eight, 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 eight years, second. every record. Because that's the way Winter Sun does it, eight years. Hey, it's a new record. And you know Yari's going to probably have to fight all the other bands he's going to allow to record in his new studio. But now that's, th- and this was something that you had brought up with me when we were standing around uh, having a couple beers yesterday. Yeah. And it, that, that nobody's realized all their fans, their fans are going to buy them uh, about, a, about basically one million U.S. dollar studio. Well, is that just going to be their studio and that's all they do? Of course not. Because the it's called double dipping, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Where you get your fans to buy you a studio, but then you're going to turn around and rent it out to other bands. And I mean, of course, this is all assumption. I mean, you know. Probably an accurate one. I, I think so. Because, I mean, one, you'd really be foolish not to do it, especially if you're getting a high-quality studio built to your specifications, which people in the metal community in Finland are going to hear that and be like, hey, can we just come, like, you know, record a demo there for a day? Right. Sure. Thousand bucks. Whoa, boy. This makes a lot more money than making shit-ass music. Which, ironically, isn't, the, isn't that the very thing that made Yari want to crowdfund a studio? Because <laughs> he was the one having to pay that? Yeah. And, 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 you know, the funny thing is, you know, he went back and asked Nuclear Blast years ago for 100 grand to build this studio. He just didn't have the computer power to make Time 2. However, he fucking made Time 1 with the same shit, and it was amazing. Yeah. That's what that's what I don't get. Your his argument holds no water because time one was made no matter what the artist thinks. The artist is the harshest critic of everything he makes. Oh, absolutely. The fan outcry was that of a positive one. It sounded great. Again, I say again, one of the greatest intros in metal. Oh no, absolutely. The, know, the, yeah. Land of Snow and Sorrow, great song. It's it's it, there's a lot of great things on there that he was able to get done. With maybe lackluster equipment, maybe, but it doesn't show in the end product at all. Did they change the crowdfunding? Because I know they were going to go back and remaster. Did they change the land of uh, of uh, winter and uh, crowd crowdfunding? Because uh, you know, land be- of winter and awesome winter sun fans. Yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, yeah, I, I'm not rooting for it to fail. I just don't see it succeeding. It's 750000 That's a lot. Now, the, the average person is going to say, hey, it's only been like a week and a half. They already hit two hundred fifty. How many people are going to keep cranking 50 euros into this band yeah, and day that puts one, out a record every eight years? Let's be Day honest. one, they had half that. It took them another nine days to get here. And it has slowed signific- significantly after that. Well, we'll see. Now, then, then the other fan would say, hey, no, it's not every eight years. It's every four years you, or five years, you jackass. Because obviously, four, the Forest record is going to come out in July. Well, I don't know. I'll believe it when I see it. Ooh, well, that's actually, you know what? You're, that's probably smart thinking on that. Uh, we're going to get back to working on our stuff. We'll probably have a cover track. If you disagree you with me, folks. leave a comment. Don't just thumb her down. Let's talk. Let's chat. Let's open debate. Yeah. Now, that, that is kind of actually maybe the biggest aggravation is the uh, is somebody will go, bah, yeah. Dis- thumbs down. Well, but Disagree yet with me, but, you know, copy and paste your best reason why, and then we'll have a chat. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're going to have our uh, stuff coming out here before long. That's fine. You shit on it if you want. I don't really yeah, frankly you could, care. Yeah, you could drop trout and drop a big stinky log on everything. Create it, it affects me at all. It doesn't affect me at all. So, you know, it's all just about getting shit out there and being heard. Um, and if you're looking for something to plug in, I uh, played the entirety of uh, Elder. Well, getting excited about the uh, release that Elder has coming out later this year. Uh, plug in Lore. That's uh, That's a great record. And uh, really fun to get a little liquored up to. Are we all good to move on to MMA? 
I suppose so. There's uh, two fights coming up tomorrow. One I will not watch. The other I will barely watch. Well, I, uh, I make it a rule not to uh, watch cards that come on in the a.m. Well, anybody that knows Brandon knows that he wakes up sometimes with a crack at two. Hey, <laughs> no one knows what it's like to be the night man, <laughs> to be the sad man. Good, good reference to Thank the you. who. Yeah, Thank right. you very much. Um, but while we're looking at Jimmy Manwa, by the way, is the uh, main face on the uh, on the card that will be on the fight pass tomorrow morning. And if that's the best that UFC can roll out, hey, it's still better than Bellator, I suppose. But frankly, it's a Saturday morning. I got shit to do. Yeah. I mean, I hope Manwa wins. It will do him some good. Brad Pickett, I think, is having his retirement fight tomorrow. Yeah. Which, hey, anytime any fighter's retiring, you want him to go out on a high note. Uh, outside of that, I'm looking at the card, and if you're a fan of British fighters, you're going to have a great day. Yeah. No, no, this is, this is coming out of London. That's all it is. It's really it's a London home Brad fight. Pickett, Joseph Duffy. Let's see. Leon Edwards. I'm kind of curious who the UFC is going to have covering some of this because yeah, obviously you don't have Rogan because he only does pay-per-view events and if they're in the United States of America. You have no more uh, Goldberg anymore, so. Yeah, but, yeah, you never really saw Goldberg on, like, a Fox Sports 1 card or anything without Joe. Maybe maybe sparingly, but not regularly. You know, I mean, they would have um, uh, John Anik at some of these European fights once in a while. Oh, well, oh so shit. Uh, quick uh, update. That Manuel Anderson card is actually March 18th. Oh, well, hell, that's not even this weekend. Then. Yeah. So it's, oh. still, it's still in the shitty time, but next week. Okay, well, guess what? I'm not watching it. Yeah, next still week not yet. watching it, but <laughs> <laughs> that's that, the that's, morning after that's St. Patrick's the day, day after Patty's Day, <laughs> and I don't believe I'll be fucking watching it. <laughs> All right, so uh, so we stand corrected. Yeah. All right, so one fight tomorrow. Let's talk about that one though. That's the one that I do want to see, and this is the one from Fortaleza, Brazil. I do want to see Ed, Edson Barboza fight. Yeah, and uh, let's see who's he. I mean, Vitor Belfort obviously is. Uh, that's the main. That's the headliner on that whole thing, but. Trying to trying to watch cards in Brazil can be a little annoying sometimes because yeah. they do purely you know, make it a Brazil versus the world kind of card. And I mean, really, okay, I'm going to assume the last five of this card is the main card. Right. You got Alex, you got Cowboy Oliveira fighting Tim Means, dude from Albuquerque. Going Tim Means on that. Yeah. Trinaldo fighting Kevin Lee. I'm going Trinaldo just because, you know, Brazil and Trinaldo's a beast. Uh, Lee is a little boring to watch, too, let's be honest. Yeah. You got uh, Mauricio. You got Shogun fighting uh, Gian Which, Volante. Shogun, who uh, is. I, okay, I'd be excited if it was like five or six years ago. Yeah. And then you got your co main, Barbosa fighting Dariush. Which, uh, man, Benyel Dariush, that's a hard guy to pick against. Yeah. I think Dariush is going to win, but I'll actually probably be rooting for Edson Barbosa. Well, you know, home field advantage in Brazil is a big thing for Brazilian fighters. Yeah, but I haven't seen Bar uh, uh, Dariush lose a single fight since he's been on the UFC uh, payroll. Yeah. Uh, I, I I almost want to call that a pick and fight, dude. It, it is. It you is. Know? I mean, really. I mean, you know, I, I'd like to see Edson get a win because that guy is just a pure striker. But yeah. I mean, he uh, he's beaten Gilbert Melendez and Pettis. Lost to El Kakui. Right. You know, which nothing wrong with that. A lot of people seem to be doing <laughs> that lately. Yep. Which is why he can't get a fucking fight. And uh, Dariush is, looks like he's had some uh, loss of Kiesa. Oh, I forgot about the uh, Michael Kiesa fight. Yeah. Uh, beat James Vick and uh, beat uh, Rashid Magomedov. So if you look at the, just the names of who they fought before, advantage Barbosa immediately. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see what happens with that fight. And then you got uh, Vitor. Good old Vitor for the Jesus. No more uh, TRT Tort. Who is one and three in his last four fights. And uh, really the only person he's beat since uh, November 9th of 2013 is Dan Henderson. <laughs> yeah. Twice. Which uh, so, so have a lot of people. So Yeah. But he's uh, he's lost to Weidman. He's lost to Jacare. He's lost to Musasi. Yeah. Who's is, he got? He's got Calvin Gaslam, who made weight. Can't make 170, but by God, he can make 185. Well, it depends. The Gastelum we saw fighting back in November looked a little flat-footed and slow at times. Yeah. Well, that was a close fight with uh, Magnum. Yeah. And um, but again, and then he fought Hendricks at once. That's that's such a funny fight. Two people that just can't fucking make weight to save right. their lives at one seventy. Yeah. 
There's a joke <laughs> in there somewhere. Which, of course, Hendrick's lost, and then he beat Tim Kennedy. So uh, he's, you can say he's streaking, but, uh, you know, you got the grizzled vet in Vitor who, who can swarm you. Yeah, who's fighting in Brazil? I mean, I think that's uh, that's an immediate <coughs> that's an immediate advantage for a lot of Brazilians. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. Well, that's I think that's it. A little uh, we're a little flat footed this week. I think you could say in some regards. But uh, but hey, we can't follow up last week's uh, big rage. Yeah, podcast. look, you, you can't be mad all the time, people. <laughs> you know, you gotta take time to enjoy the finer fucking things in life. Quote uh, Roddy Dangerfield. Hey, I ain't a fighter. I'm a lover. Hey, let's all get laid. <laughs> if, we're quo- if we're quoting the good man. Uh, no respect. None. Fucking zilch. Well, I guess it's time to get to work. All right. We're uh, going to get to work on some music. See you jackasses next week. St. Patty's Day episode. Guarantee you. I ain't going to be sober. So. We might have to bang out a Thursday. We'll no, no, no. Fuck that. We're doing it on Patty's Day. I, I might have somebody come to town. Let's go drinking on the road. So we have a guest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can see. We can see. Maybe. Either that or be on the lookout for Brogastral's solo podcast coming out. St. Patty's Day. <laughs> see you infidels later. <laughs>